Hello, so this video is going to be an introduction to right triangle trigonometry and specifically the trigonometric ratios. After watching this, you ought to be able to find the value of a particular trigonometric ratio if you're given a picture of the triangle with the um, measurements of its legs and its hypotenuse. So we'll start with a little review of right triangles and then we'll get right into it. Let's start by reminding ourselves what we mean when we say a right triangle. Uh, hopefully you remember from geometry class that a right triangle is a triangle that has one 90 degree angle. Oops, that's not the best looking triangle I've ever drawn, uh, but we'll call it that. We use a little square in the corner of the 90 degree angle to indicate that that's the 90 degree angle. There can only be one 90 degree angle in a right triangle, in any triangle, uh, because remember they all have to add up to 180. So once you have established that there's a 90 degree angle in your triangle, then what we can do is we can name or categorize the sides of a particular uh, right triangle. These two shorter sides, this one here and this one, these are called legs. And the longer side, which is across from the 90 degree angle, is called the hypotenuse. It's a fancy name. It's fun to say. It's the longest side. So you already learned that, hopefully, in your geometry class. I'm just reminding you that these short sides are called legs, and the longest side is called the hypotenuse. Now, when we work with uh, trigonometry, trigonometry is a word that uh, roughly translated uh, means triangle measurement. Uh, and we talk about trigonometric ratios. We always start by identifying one of the other two angles in the right triangle. And we typically give that uh, the variable theta. Theta is kind of like a zero with a line across the middle horizontally. And that theta represents the measure of this angle over here in the left corner. Everything that we do in trigonometry is going to be based on uh, that theta. I should say everything we do in this video, uh, naming the trig ratios, is going to be based on that theta. Once you've established, once you've established uh, where theta is, we're going to change the names of these sides. Uh, actually, we're going to change the name of the two legs. So the hypotenuse is always going to be the hypotenuse. So we're just going to check this one off. It's still called the hypotenuse. But now that we've established theta, we can uh, differentiate between the legs. The leg that is across from angle theta, we call that the opposite leg. Or you might see it as just OPP for short. In fact, We'll call the hypotenuse HYP. And then the other leg that's right next to or that's included in the creation of angle theta is called the adjacent leg because it's next to it. And we're going to read that ADJ for adjacent. So we always figure out where theta is, and then we make sure we label the opposite side and the adjacent side so that we know uh, where those are. And then the hypotenuse, of course, is always the hypotenuse. So those are the pieces of the right triangles. Now what I want to do for you is discuss what we call the trigonometric ratios. So we take this picture, and then we define some fractions based on the picture. So let's talk about these trig ratios. I'm going to quickly draw that picture again that we just had on the other slide. It's a little smaller this time, uh, and I'll quickly get that in. We've got angle theta, and then remember, once you establish theta, the side across from theta is OPP, uh, the side next to it is adjacent, and then the longest side across from the right angle is a hypotenuse. From this picture, what we've done over the years is we've defined what we call trigonometric ratios. 
And in geometry class, you not only learned the trig ratios, but you also learned a fancy little saying to remember three of them. So from this picture, when we want to talk about the ratio of the opposite side of the hypotenuse, we call that the sine of theta. And that fraction or ratio that we make is the opposite side over the hypotenuse. You may have learned the phrase so katoa, and uh, the word so comes from sine, opposite, and hypotenuse. That's an acronym, not really a word. And then for cosine, you may remember that that is the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. And that is a C-A-H. That's where the ka comes from. And then for tangent ratio, that is the uh, opposite side divided by the adjacent side, or opposite over adjacent. That's where the toa comes from. Now, as you start to further your um, learning in trigonometry, you're going to be introduced to uh, three other ratios. They, t they end up being the reciprocals of these. And I usually teach students another phrase to help them remember the, um, the fractions. You learned in geometry about so katoa. Let's talk about another little verbal cue that you can use to remember the other three trig ratios. So there's a trig ratio called the secant function. It's the SEC of theta. Its fraction is the reciprocal of cosine. So it's actually the hypotenuse over the adjacent. And so we label that acronym SHA. Secant is hypotenuse over, hypo, hypotenuse over adjacent. There's another one called cosecant, which is uh, CSC of theta. That is the reciprocal of sine, so that's hypotenuse over opposite. And so that looks like CHO. And then there's a cotangent ratio, cotangent theta, COT, which is formed by the adjacent over opposite. It's the reciprocal of the tangent. And so if you write that out, that's CAO. And in my mind, that looks like Sha Cho Kao. Sha Cho Kao. So we have Sokotoa for the original three trig ratios, and now we have Shacho Kao, and I'm, I'm stretching it here, C-A-O, I'm saying Kao. Um, that's just going to help me remember how to set up the fractions. On the next slide, I've got a nice little table that has a summary of what we've talked about here. And if you want to take a screenshot of that or write it in your notes, that's probably not a bad idea. So as you can see here, I've just organized what we discussed on the last slide in a table. The original three trig functions, sine, theta, cosine, theta, and tangent theta. And then the three new ones, secant theta, cosecant theta, and cotangent theta. Put the acronyms in there so you can use those to help you remember how to make the fractions. But ultimately, our job is to just create these ratios. That's our goal for this particular lesson. Simply look at a triangle and write down the ratios for for that particular angle. Let's do a couple examples and we'll wrap this video up. So as you work through these introductory problems, your goal is simply going to be to make a fraction. That's all we really wanna do, we wanna make a fraction. I'm just taking a second to write that down because that is what we're trying to do. Now, you need to make the correct fraction. And to do that, you need to know which ratio you're looking for. So in the problems that you're given in this first little lesson, we're just gonna list one ratio and we wanna know the fraction for the tangent theta in this case that's associated with this triangle. So here's how we get that done. We're given a right triangle. Now notice this one's not drawn the way the, the triangles were in the other slides that I drew. It's rotated, and you just have to be careful and always start by labeling your hypotenuse and your legs. So first of all, right away, I know that this 17 is the hypotenuse. There are two dead giveaways. First of all, the hypotenuse is across from 
the right angle. So that's part of it. But the more uh, obvious way to do this is just to pick the longest side. The longest side of a right triangle is the hypotenuse. Now remember, we have these new names for the other legs. One's called opposite and one's called adjacent. You have to put those words in the right spot, and it has nothing to do with how long the legs are. The way you figure out the opposite and adjacent is you identify where theta is. Then to get the opposite side, you go across from theta and you label this one. So 15 happens to be the opposite. And then that adjacent side is, this, is the leg that helps form theta and it's next to it. So this is the adjacent. Once you have hypotenuse, opposite, and adjacent labeled, then you can start to write down your fraction. You just go to our chart. The tangent of theta is that TOA, T-O-A, T-O-A stands for opposite over adjacent. And then we're ready to finish this problem off. Tangent of theta equals the opposite side, which is 15, over the adjacent side, which is 8. And we are done with this thing. These are fast. The only reason it took me so long is I'm trying to talk it out completely and explain everything and also color in my highlighted answer. Uh, but it, it, it will go faster for you. You identify theta. You make sure you know the opposite and the adjacent sides and the hypotenuse, obviously. That one's pretty easy to find. And then based on the ratio that you're asked to find, you make your fraction, right? We're just making fractions today. Let's just try one more example, and you won't be listening to me until the next video. Okay, so let's do this thing again. Remember, we're just trying to make a fraction. The fraction will uh, equal the cosecant of theta. So right away, I see the longest side is 13, and I label that as the hypotenuse. I see that my theta is here. That means 5 is the opposite side, and 12 is the adjacent side. Notice this, in this particular problem, the opposite side was smaller than the adjacent. The size for the legs doesn't matter. It's their position that matters. Once you identify them, just make sure you know which ratio you're trying to find. We're trying to find the so cosecant. You'll remember that that was cha cho. Cha cho cow. That was a cho. <laughs> I almost messed that up. Uh, which is, that's going to be hypotenuse over adjacent. Uh, I can't read. I probably should start this video over, but you know what? I'm not gonna. People make mistakes. You've seen me do it plenty of times. Let's just make sure we wrote this down right. So the cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. It is the hypotenuse over the opposite. I've got it right now. Let's make this fraction and get out of this video before I make any other mistakes. So here we go. The cosecant of theta is the hypotenuse, which is 13, over the opposite side, which is 5. Whew, yes, I've got it right. I'm going to highlight that thing, and I'm going to get you out of here. Okay? So when you first start working with trig ratios, all you're doing is making fractions. Once we get the hang of this, we'll start considering these trig ratios as functions and investigating their properties. Good luck with these. Let us know if you have any questions. Take care.